Hi there, and welcome back to Practical Knife Reviews. Today for you, we're going to be reviewing the Marvel's GI Utility Knife, MR278. So this knife is a reproduction of the traditional um, GI Utility Knife that started being used in World War II and continued on for several decades after that. There were several different makers that would make basically this exact same knife. Camillus had uh, one, several other companies made uh, again, essentially the exact same model. Marbles, uh, in its current iteration, that is to say, after uh, they went out of business in Gladstone, Michigan, and relocated their business operations to China, um, there is a, uh, a company that's run through Smoky Mountain Knife Works, uh, but produced in China. Once they moved their, their base of operations, they started to produce uh, basically a reproduction of the traditional GI utility knife. So what do we got here? We've got stainless steel scales with a stainless steel bale. Uh, and for those of you unfamiliar, the bale is used for putting a lanyard onto to tie to either your pack or your pants or something so you don't lose it. We've got a spear blade. It says marbles, quality knives on it. Also with a tang stamp marbles. MR278 China. We've got a hawkbill can opener, again, tank stamp marbles. And something to notice on each of these blades, they all have match strike pulls, which if you had to strike anywhere matches, you would be able to use on those. Uh, in theory, anyway, I don't have any strike anywhere matches on me, so we're not going to test that. We've got a cap lifter screwdriver combination tool and Last but not least, it's probably the tool I use the most on this, is a small awl and scraper. Uh, you can't really see, but this is actually sharpened. It's not as sharp as the blade, but it is sharpened to the point where you can use it to scrape things. And uh, that's pretty much what I use this for the most rather than actually using it as an awl. On each of these, I would say that the pull is about, mm, I would say that the pull on the main blade is about a four and a half or a five all of the other implements I would say are about a six. Uh, the back spring, yeah, is quite solid. It takes quite a bit of effort to push them closed. And uh, yeah, we've got our nice little checkerboard stainless steel scales. So Lara, do you know why they would make a, a knife, utility knife that has stainless steel scales? Not a clue. So in World War II, at least this is the story that's told. In World War II, um, the army was worried about the scales of their knives, their utility knives that they would give to the soldiers. Um, in the Pacific theater, they would worry about the scales if they were made from horn or bone, from cracking or warping in the high heat and humidity. And also they were thinking that there uh, you know, could be a shortage of, of the supply, whereas stainless steel, all they would do is stamp this out and they could slap these together and stainless steel doesn't warp in the uh, humid conditions. So. Let's take a few quick measurements. And I should also mention, uh, again, just to reiterate, these are made in China. So we'll take a measurement of the main blade. Flip that around. And we've got a overall length when the main blade is open of about six and a quarter inches. Maybe just a hair, nah, about six and a quarter inches with a main blade length of about two and three quarters inches and a cutting length of two and a half inches. Closed, it has a length of about uh, just a hair over three and a half inches long. And now for a weight. This is a little bit heavier than uh, what people would typically carry as a EDC just because, well, there's a bunch of tools on it and it's made completely of steel. But still, it's only 3.5 ounces, which um, when you think about it, with all of the tools that you're getting, uh, 99 grams, with all the tools that you're getting, and the fact that it's all stainless steel, so you're really not going to be able to break the handle or the scales, um, and it's not too heavy. Laura, what do you think of this? I think it looks neat, not like any that I've seen before. Um, it looks interesting. It's all one color, I wish there was like maybe a little 
variation in color, but that's just being picky. Sure, and uh, I mean, I can see it from the design side where this doesn't necessarily look the most appealing, but the reason why these would be used as utility knives for the Army, what, do you, what price do you think this is at, Laura? If you look at smkw.com right now, what do you think that you'd be able to get this for? Oh, I, I don't know, maybe $15. Try seven. You get the knife for $7, or uh, they also have a combo package where you can get this and then their eating tool, which is a basically a spork with a, a can opener and a, a cap lifter on it for uh, $10 between the two. So very economically priced and yeah, that's why you don't see a lot of flair on it. The army would have been producing things economically for their soldiers. So we're going to test all of the implements on here quickly for you, but right here, all we're going to test is the sharpness of the blade. And uh, just a brief mention, I have sharpened this blade extensively because I've used it quite a bit. So the, the um, bevel on it is a, quite a bit different than it was when it came in, but we'll see how we're able to cut with it. And well, again, I think that that's pretty definitive. This is our just typical lined notebook paper. Very sharp. And very, very sharp. This is 440A stainless steel, very rust resistant very easy to sharpen. Doesn't hold an edge the longest, but very easy to sharpen to an incredibly sharp edge. I mean, I can shave with this if I want to, but I'm not gonna do that on the camera because I don't wanna gross any of the viewers out. Now let's take a look at how it does on our cardboard here. Again, just stereotypical corrugated cardboard. And well, we can see we can go right through it with no problem at all. I mean, it's really just going right through it. Um, part of that is due to the fact that due to all of the sharpenings I've done on it, um, this bevel is a bit thinner than it was before. The secondary bevel isn't quite as pronounced as it was. So this is a much more slicey edge than it would have been fresh out of the box. But I mean, very little effort was put into sharpening this to get it this sharp. So yep. Any other thoughts, Lara, before we take this out to look at the uh, other tools on it? Nope, I'm excited to see it out in the field. All right, then we'll be right back. So now we're gonna look at how the can opener, Hawkbill can opener on the Marbles GI Utility Knife works. So we've got just our standard tin can here. And this works by hooking the bottom side of the Hawkbill under the lip here, then finding the edge there and simply pushing and going through. And you can see, this doesn't work quite as fast as the crank uh, can openers, and I know that there's some electric can openers that work even faster. But you can see, as far as can openers on just a utility knife go, this is really simple, and really fast, and in no time at all, we've already opened our can. So this Hawk, Hawk Bill can opener works fantastic. So now we're going to check out a field review of the Marbles USGI utility knife. Um, we're not going to check out the cap lifter screwdriver because, well, frankly, I don't have any bottles that need to have their lids lifted off of, and I don't have any flathead screws that really need to be put in, but this would work just the same as any of your typical cap lifter screwdriver tools. The only thing to note on this particular one is you might be able to tell, but the edge of the screwdriver is very, very thin, which is nice for some regards. Some screws do have relatively narrow slots in their head, but on other knives that have cap lifter screwdrivers, I have a tendency to use the, uh, the screwdriver portion of it as kind of a pry bar, which yeah, I know is asking for trouble, but frankly, if you need a pry bar, uh, I don't really feel like using the tip of the knife for it, so I end up using the screwdriver a lot of times. Uh, for this one, I'm sure it would be fine. It's not going to be heat treated to be hard. It's going to just be treated to be tough, but but still, you know, you'd be running the risk of uh, chipping off a bit of the tip just because of how thin it is. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, even though I'm sure uh, for most things you'd be fine. So we already saw how the Hawkbill can opener did. So now we're going to take a look at the awl slash scraper and the blade. First, we'll look at the blade. Uh, and now just to 
preface this, we're going to keep in mind that I have reprofiled this edge just because of how many times I've sharpened it. Um, I, I carry this most days as just a secondary carry and I find it to be really useful. But uh, yeah, I've got this edge razor sharp, but slightly different profile on it. So if you order this and it comes in the mail, the edge is going to perform a little bit differently than it would if it just came right out of the package. So first, since I just cleaned the blade, we're going to peel an apple, which is something that you could expect to be doing with a, uh, you know, an EDC pocket knife. And well, we can see here that I've got it sharp and it's a very thin blade as these traditionals tend to have. And so again, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not the best apple skinner. I just eat the, the skin on my apple. Lara on the other hand always skins her apples. So I'm allergic to the outside of them. Yeah, this would be a, a skill that you could pick up. It's not something that I've ever needed to just because the skin I, I actually like eating it so but based on how thin the uh, the blade stock itself is and especially because I've reprofiled that edge to have uh, an even thinner profile right behind the edge and how sharp you can get this 440a steel really easily I mean we can see that we're able to just take this peel off really no problem and if I had a better skill as an apple peeler well this would go a lot faster I'm sure but nonetheless, we're able to get through it pretty quick. But I'm gonna stop right there and I'm just gonna eat the rest of the apple with the skin on because I don't wanna bore you people by letting you watch me uh, skin this whole apple. Yeah, set that over there. So now we'll just take a quick look at how it cuts into wood because you know, you got an EDC utility knife on you, you might come across wood. So as always, we've got our pine and we've got our red oak. So we can see in pine that razor sharp edge and the thin profile lets you cut into it quite easily um, since it doesn't have this uh, a, a very deep V on the bevel you're not able to get quite as nice a feather sticks as you would with something with a scandy grind or a, a full convex maybe but I mean this is still quite acceptable feather sticks for just a small pocket knife that you would just have in your pocket every day. Now, of course, pine is quite soft, so it's easy to do that. But uh, let's take a look at red oak, which is about, you know, the most that you would want to do with a, a small pocket knife like this. And well, again, the thin stock combined with the fact that I've got it razor sharp. And again, at 440A steel, while it doesn't hold the edge the longest, it is very, very easy to sharpen to that razor sharp level. Um, we can see that even on this hard red oak, we're able to get really nice feather sticks. And since it's a perfect rectangle, the chest grip is essentially the same. It feels the same in chest lever grip as it does with uh, just standard either hammer grip um, or basically any other kind of grip because it is a square. Though I wouldn't recommend using chest lever grip with this as it is um, just a slip joint and there's no lock on it and you tend to when you're pulling out of the chest lever grip get a little bit of pull back so wouldn't necessarily recommend that but it feels about the same however feeling the same isn't necessarily a great thing this is a very square knife there's no chamfering of the ends uh, as you can see the the edges of this are relatively sharp and they're metal so when you're really bearing down on this knife, it doesn't have the most comfortable in-hand feel. And you can see where it was kind of digging into my hand as I was really bearing down to go through the oak. So ergonomically speaking, this might not be the most comfortable knife in the world, but certainly for your typical tasks, it's going to be absolutely fine. I mean, it's not uncomfortable unless you're really squeezing it. Now the last thing that we're gonna look at is the tool on this that I probably use the most. Uh, and if you looked close at it, you'd see how beat up it is, but this is an all slash scraper. So the scraper is semi-sharp. It's not sharp enough to, you know, well, actually it might be sharp enough to, well, yeah, you can see, you can actually cut into the wood a little bit, but that's just because of how thin it is rather than the fact that it's actually supposed to be sharpened. And we've just got some leather here. This is just standard upholstery leather. It's not the toughest leather in the world, but we're just gonna use the awl on it to see how you can punch through leather. And you can see 
right through. Now let's double it over for a little bit of extra resistance. And again, we're right through. Let's fold it over one more time. So we've got four layers of upholstery leather and right through yet again. Uh, this is quite thin at the tip. Again, I wouldn't use it for prying. I wouldn't use it a pry bar at all. Um, it's quite thin, but it's fairly sharp. It goes through leather super easily, at least this upholstery leather, which is what I had on hand. The scraper works great. I use it all the time. I used it this morning to scrape off the bottom of a stool to put new ad adhesive pads on the bottom of it. Uh, I use this uh, all slash scraper most days, I would say. Whereas the other tools on this, you know, the knife I use a lot of days, but I carry other knives on me at the same time. I've always got more than one on me. So, you know, I, I keep this razor sharp, but I don't use it a, a terrible amount compared to the other knives that I EDC. The can opener works really well. Uh, it's about half the speed of a crank can opener, but considering that it's on a multi-tool, works really well. I mean, it's easy and it's it's fast. It's half the speed of a crank can opener, but still that's fast. It takes you, what, 20 seconds to open a can? And the cap lifter screwdriver, yeah, it's your typical cap lifter screwdriver. And you get all of this for $6.99 from SMKW. Um, stainless steel uh, scales. I mean, you're really not going to be able to do much damage to this, frankly. So. Laura, do you have any final thoughts on uh, the Marbles GI utility knife? And that code was uh, MR278. I think it's a very practical knife and I could see myself carrying something like this. So I'm not, I might not be cutting wood and stuff in the woods like you would, but you know, using the bottle opener, or the can opener, that, that might be something that I would use it for. Or the so. screwdriver, which right. I just want to point out, you know, you never know when you need a screwdriver. When I was visiting one of our other siblings, uh, at their apartment, the door handle, uh, the door knob just fell off the door and their uh, set of tools was out in their car. So we were basically stuck on the inside with the door knob disconnected, except I did have uh, the screwdriver. And so I was able to just put the handle back onto the door and then open the door and then tighten it up a little bit more. Uh, you never know when you need one of these. And I mean, it is a, quite a practical tool. So. Uh, there you go. There's our look at the Marbles GI Utility Knife MR278. And uh, for my money, and for the money that you'd be spending on it, $7, uh, you can't do a whole lot better for in terms of what uh, you can get done with it. So thanks for watching and tune in next time with us.